Now, before we start digitizing, I briefly want to talk to you about the nature of the map that we are about to digitize. Now, this map is an example of a typical field interpretation that often gets digitized. The green lines are wax pencil. Sometimes the lines will be felt tip pen. Most lines in this map are green, except for this black one. And that is because the black contrasted with the photo better. We have a legend with five categories in it. Commercial, salt marsh, forest, open space and urban. We're missing out on a sixth category for water. Here's a line that's been crossed out. And, quite typical of this sort of interpretation, there are also polygons that are unlabeled. A recurring theme in these sorts of interpretations are that they are a guide for the person who is doing the on-screen digitizing. So, ideally, you will have at least a rudimentary understanding of what you're digitizing before you tackle a digitizing project. Also, using the measuring tool, you can see that the wax pencil lines measure between 8 and 15 meters wide on the ground. So, clearly, there are a bunch of issues that you need to consider before you embark on your digitizing project. OK, now let's digitise a couple of polygons. In the layers area, we've got the land use interpretation rectified map that we've scanned and geo-referenced, and the two air photos over our field area that we can display at any time to get more detail. And our land use interpretation map, which at the moment is only a donut polygon. We've also got cadastral information and that's property information, um, title boundaries and so forth, if we want to overlay that at any point. Okay, so let's zoom into a small area and start digitizing. I want to zoom in around here because there's a couple of discrete small polygons that we can have a bit of a play with. Now, the first thing we need to do is to make the land use interpretation map editable. And when we do that, the digitizing related buttons become enabled. Click the Add Feature button. Left mouse button, 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 left mouse button. I'm only going to digitize this first polygon roughly, just to show you something. We are going over the edge of the map boundary, even though the land use interpretation map has a donut in it. Right click and then attribute the polygon with salt marsh. And look, there's our first polygon digitized. We know that it's digitized because we can select it and it displays yellow. Now, what do you notice about this? We created a donut polygon so that we could have a neat edge, but yet when we digitize this polygon, it goes over the edge. Okay, now it is time to see why we have got this problem. So let's look at the settings and go to the snapping options. Here's the problem. We don't have the avoid intersections box checked. Click OK. Now don't enable the cadastral lay layer though. We're only enabling the land use interpretation map for the moment. Now select the polygon that goes over the edge if it is not selected already. Click on the delete selected button to delete it. Now we'll digitize it again. Now I'm just going to do this very roughly. To digitize it, left click, left click, left click, and then right click to finish. Now call the polygon Salt Marsh. See how this time it has clipped to the boundary. Let's click so we can see the air photo against the boundaries that we just digitized. Now they don't look so good, do they? You often need to make lots of decisions when you are digitizing. So let's delete the salt marsh polygon again and have another go at digitizing it, this time directly from the air photo. Now, when you're digitizing from air photo backdrops, the increased detail often means that there are a lot of decisions to make. So for example, is this a sandbar or is it a part of the salt marsh? Now, 
the other thing is that it's really important that your nomenclature, i.e. the way you go about naming things, is consistent. All lowercase salt marsh is different from all uppercase salt marsh. And that's different from salt marsh with a capital S or salt marsh's sentence case. What I am talking about now is the difference between a GIS database and a digital map. When you are naming things, you need to be mindful of the naming conventions that you use. And that's done. I want you to have a bit of a play with um, some more digitizing. Toggle these air photos on and off as you think you need to, and just digitize a few more polygons around the top of the map. What I am hoping to achieve by getting you to do this relatively small digitizing project is to get you to understand the sorts of decisions that constantly get made by somebody who is creating a map and the decisions that you might need to make when you are digitizing that map. So by taking the time to create a really good quality spatial database, you will be much better placed to make interesting and useful queries and even do some map modeling later on. Okay, in the next video, I will show you how to both improve the quality of the maps you digitize and speed up the digitizing process by copying and editing boundaries from other GIS maps. So, I will see you in the next video. Till then, bye.